thing is on the on the one, two. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One. It's going to make it worse, isn't it? It's going to make it worse. One, one, two, three, four. नमस्ते गरुड़ारुढ़े कोलासुर भयंकरी सर्व पाप हरे देवी महालक्ष्मी नमोस्तुते महालक्ष्मी नमोस्तुते सर्वज्ञे सर्व वर्दे सर्व दुष्ट भयंकरी सर्व दुख हरे देवी महालक्ष्मी नमोस्तुते महालक्ष्मी नमोस्तुते सिद्धि बुद्धि Bhukti Mukti Pradayani Mantra Mantra Murte Sada Devi Mahalakshmi Namostote Adhyantar Hide Devi Adi Shakti Maheshwari Yog De Yog Sambhu De Mahalakshmi Namostu De Mahalakshmi Namostu De Stool Sushma Maharodri Mahashakti Mahodare Ah, 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 ah. 
पुस्तकम स्त्रोत ये पढ़े भक्ति मान सर्व सिद्धि मवाप्नोती राज्य प्राप्नोती सर्वदा एक कालम पठे नित्यम महापाप विनाशनम आ कालम पठे नित्यम अंधान संबंधित कालम पठे नित्यम महाशत्रु विनाशनम आ I bow to all the seekers of truth. <clears throat> At the very outset, we have to understand that truth is what it is. We cannot conceptualize it, we cannot organize it and we cannot use it for our own purposes. Moreover, <clears throat> with the blinkers on both the sides like a horse, with all our conditionings, we cannot find the truth. We have to be free people, we have to be open-minded people like scientists <clears throat> to see for ourselves what is the truth. If somebody preaches something, professes something, say something, is not to be accepted blindfolded. As I told you yesterday, that the essence of all the religions is to find the eternal and to treat the transitory in its own understanding and in its own limitations. That's why we have lost our balance. If we are really the people <coughs> who want to know the truth, we have to know that at human awareness we cannot know it. It becomes a concept. You have to have the spiritual awareness, but spiritual awareness is a state of your being, where you become the spirit, again the word I'll say become, is not artificially certifying somebody that now you have become a Hindu or a Christian or a Muslim, you become anything. Because you may be a Muslim, Christian, Hindu, anything, 
you can commit any sin. You can do anything that is wrong, nothing from inside is going to stop you. So all these things have become so, were so much outward that now there are people who have started saying there is no God, there is nothing like religion, which is not true. <coughs> First of all, when we say there is nothing or there is not God, we should find out. Have we been able to find out about it or just in our ego we are saying there is no God? Have we been able to work it out to see if there is God or not? You do not judge God by the people who talk about God. Anybody can talk about God because they think there's no law that can catch them. They can talk against Him, they can talk for Him, they can do the way they like. They can even make money by talking against God and against all the prophets. That's a very good way of making money, blackmailing. But does that mean that whatever is written is a Bible or whatever is black and white is to be taken that seriously? So first of all we have to be little independent, to be free, to know that if you have to know the Spirit, as they said, know thyself, <coughs> then you have to know it on your central nervous system. As I can feel this is cold or hot, you have to feel the divine power which is all-pervading, which is the truth, which manifests the truth because it is the love of God. You have to first feel it on your central nervous system which is the bodha. Now one may say that <coughs> uh, in the West we have advanced so much, all right, we have gone too far with everything. But if you see, when we started with science, what have we produced? Hydrogen bomb, atom bomb, all kinds of devils on sitting on our heads. You take to any enterprise that we take, we go to extremes. There is no balance. Any mental projection is linear, it moves in one line and then recoils back and then you are shocked. Now you have got acid rain, you produced machinery, all right. Machinery is for you, not you are not for machinery. And thus there is no balance between you and the machinery, no balance between you and the science, it's just like going amok with anything that you get into your hand. And this balance you can only have when you become the Spirit. You see beautiful chandeliers here, beautifully made, but unless and until there is light, what is the meaning of these chandeliers? Nothing. In the same way, if you do not have the light of the Spirit shining in your attention, you will not know your meaning, like this instrument. Unless and until it is connected to the mains, it is useless. Unless and until we are connected to the mains, we do not know the Absolute and that's why all these problems are there. <coughs> now, when I am talking about this, instrument which lies within us. One has to again know that this is the knowledge of the roots. And to know the knowledge of the roots you have to become a subtler personality. With a gross mind you cannot see it. To become the subtler personality, minimum of minimum, you have to know 
that so far you have not known the roots. If you had known, there would be no problem. But there's something has gone wrong somewhere in every human enterprise, even in religions, that's why today we find this kind of a farce going on. And what has gone wrong is that we have to seek the eternal. <coughs> Maybe it might look little different. <coughs> For example, Buddha and Mahavira did not talk about God at all. I also did not talk about God for four years, at least three years. As soon as you talk of God, again people start jumping, when can we become God? This is the first question. So first you become the Self, the first step. That's why they did not talk. They said, first you become yourself. Unless and until you have your eyes, how can you see the colors? So first have your eyes. It is for your benevolence that you better get what you deserve. What is your own? Is your birthright as a human being to become the Spirit. That is what Sahaja Yoga is. Saha means with and joy is born. Born with you is the <coughs> right. To get this yoga is the union with the Divine. <coughs> is your birthright. As a human being, you are, as I told you, at the epitome of evolution. And it has to work out. But please open your hearts and open your minds. Just open it and see for yourself. It will work, I know yesterday it has worked, it is going to work out today or so. But by thinking about it, you cannot conceptualize. This is the biggest problem of our seeking that we run after some sort of a concept. Now here you have seen this instrument is the most is beautiful instrument that is created within us during the process of our evolution. The first one is the most beautiful one because it stands for our innocence. This innocence is the one which gives us real support, real strength. And you'll be surprised, it is never destroyed. It may be shad overshadowed, there may be clouds, maybe it may look to be a very dark sky, maybe a hopeless case, some people might say that we have destroyed our innocence, it cannot be destroyed. Whatever you might have done, this is one center which cannot be destroyed. You may have problems with it, but it cannot be destroyed. It is such a wonderful center you have got, which has got four petals, which looks after the pelvic plexus, looks after all the excretion within us. In our own freedom, so-called, we do all kinds of things which may not be benevolent for ourselves, doesn't matter. Kundalini cannot be destroyed, the source which is going to give you the Self-realization, I say she is your individual mother. And this mother is such a loving mother, and she knows each and everything about you from your past, from your past lives. She knows you very well. She's just waiting for a chance that she can be awakened and she can give you your second birth. 
When you were born, your mother suffered for you, you did not suffer. So to say that Kundalini awakening gives this kind of a nonsense and that kind of a nonsense is all falsehood, absolutely falsehood. And it is so absurd that how can a mother give you problems? I mean, I don't know about some mothers are funny also, that's all human problems. But this is a Divine Mother, she's not going to give you trouble. But these problems that have come are coming from people who have no authority, who have no education, who do not know what Kundalini is. Some say it is in the stomach, some say in the head, some say uh, in the legs. Those who have no character of their own, because they have to be pure people themselves, try all kinds of nonsensical tricks and create problems on the sympathetic nervous system and they call it as something that it is the problem of the Kundalini. Kundalini will never give you any problems. On the contrary, when she rises and when you get your awakening, the first thing that is established is thoughtless awareness, for a thought rises, falls, another thought rises, falls, and the Kundalini makes the thoughts smaller and in between at the present. It makes you stop in the present and you grow in the present and the thoughts if you want to think, you can think, if you don't want to think, it's not like a madhouse going on all the time, you don't know how to stop it. This works out with the Kundalini's awakening when she crosses this center of ours, which we call as Agya Chakra. <coughs> now, we should not have, again I say, blinkers about Christ. Let us see what people have to say about Christ in other shastras and scriptures. Who was He? Because people did not allow Him to manifest for more than four years, and in four years what can you do? You cannot do anything. I must tell you, in London I came, my husband was selected for a job and that's how we are here. And for four years I was struggling with seven of them, just struggling. Giving Realization was such a difficult subject to the English people at that time. They are hard nuts, I know, but once they break, they are the best. I think the best are the hardest. And it worked, it clicked. I am surprised that I had to work very hard, but there is such a foundation of Sahaja Yoga. Immediately they went all out and very scholarly also, lot of scholarship with them. Found out all about Kundalini, everything from wherever is, your libraries are so well equipped. And I was surprised, it was all there. They studied Sanskrit. Now, can you imagine these people, English, singing Sanskrit song with that speed? Wow. They could not even say one sentence in Hindi when they were in India. Three hundred years they were there, they could not speak one sentence, you'll be surprised. We had to tell them in English how to speak Hindi. Like you have to say, open the door. Is in Hindi, is darwaza khol do. They couldn't say it. So we had to say, there was a banker or something like that, means close the door, there was a banker. They couldn't speak Hindi, Sanskrit very far off. And now look at them, what has happened to them? And Indian music is such a difficult music, you have to really, it's a question of penance, tremendous penance. Now we have people who play beautiful tabla, beautiful instruments, not only but sing so well, Swiss, the hardest nuts you can ever think of. <laughs> they are, you'll be amazed, the Swiss, the way they sing, tremendous manifestation in such a short time. Of course, 
they can also sing English very well, they can, they know English music very well, or which has Western music very well. But to learn these difficult melodies of India is remarkable. I am myself surprised at this. So what happens in the second centers when it enters? You just become dynamic because the center, second center is for aesthetics and for creativity. Now we have, like my brother who was a chartered accountant, he was very bad at all the languages, very bad, of course Sanskrit was out of question. Now he is ma making poetry in Sanskrit and in Urdu language and also in Marathi which is the most difficult language. This is the second center. When Kundalini nourishes that center like a very beautiful mother she nourishes. You must have heard about some great artist, Amzad Ali, he was here. After realization he became such a great artist. There are so many artists. In India they understand, they want to sing before me. I mean I don't know how to say that now only one person can sing. Because their Kundalini goes up, and the creativity becomes so tremendously active and so dynamic. At the same time, that person becomes very mild, very sweet, very compassionate. Like this one great singer, she's a Muslim lady, I will not name her. She wanted to sing and she sent me word, please allow me to sing in your birthday. I said, all right, give her a chance. So she came down. And the lady who was playing harmonium, she came and told me, this lady is just an atom bomb, you don't know how she gets angry, there's one, one note I play wrong. I saw her, but she was very silently playing, nothing doing, she never got angry with anyone. So in the interval this lady comes and tells me that, see, in your presence I don't know what has happened to this lady. <laughs> this tiger has become like a cow, how is it? I said, see her Kundalini has come up. So this violence, this anger, this temper is not your creation, it's the creation of your liver. Your liver is little out of order because of many things and the temper is there. Now when that temper is too much, you don't know what to do. I mean you can do whatever you like. In your temper after all it's like a drunken personality. You have to approach a person in a temper with a barge pole. But all this temper, everything becomes so cool and so beautiful. It's very surprising, a very dynamic person becomes extremely compassionate, extremely compassionate and I've had such beautiful experiences of their compassion that it's not easy to describe. Now also the, they say that there are certain nationality which has got a trait like this and a trait like that, everything dissolves, everything dissolves because of this center which is so creative and which also gives you the manifestation of pure knowledge, pure knowledge. For example, you start feeling on your fingertips, you just start feeling on your fingertips. Like today only somebody came and told me that, Mataji, my Agya is catching, Agya is the center. Means I have got my ego on. Will anybody say like that? On the contrary, if you tell somebody you have got your ego, they'll show you they have their ego on. It's very dangerous to say to somebody your ego is on. But just because of self-knowledge, pure knowledge, you know that this, this Mr. Ego is sitting here and I cannot cross through and there's a blockade here which I have to take it up. It's so innate within you, everything, only thing is your connection has to be made. Once the connection is made, immediately you know about yourself and 
this center which is responsible for creating all kinds of funny thoughts and horrible creativity becomes so benevolent, so soothing, so beautiful. Apart from that, as I told you just now, these people who could not even say one word in Hindi language have started singing Sanskrit and this, especially the one they sang, the first one, many Indians cannot sing that way, I can tell you, they can't. It's not easy. It's a very great tongue twister, first of all, the languages. Apart from that, to sing in such a correct pronunciation is so difficult, but they have done it. So, in Sahaja Yoga, an artist who is struggling today may become a great artist tomorrow. But still I would say these are temptations. You'll become a great artist, you start earning more money, this, that, but that's not the one you have to really be satisfied with. You will never be satisfied with that. So you move to the third center, which we call as the Nabhi Chakra. This center is, on one side, is made of water, another side with fire. Around it are our ten valencies, which we can call as our innate religion within ourselves. Now this Nabi itself, or we can call the solar plexus, or we can say uh, the navel chakra, gives us, as soon as the Kundalini rises, she awakens this and the light when it spreads. You become religious, I don't have to tell you anything, you just become. I don't have to say that you don't take drugs, you just don't take it. Overnight I have seen people have given up drugs, overnight alcoholism, overnight everything, and they enjoy their virtues, that's the best part of it. Some people think, oh then what is the fun? What is this that you take something in the pub and next day you have hangover. Here you take something and next day you are much better off. It never comes down. It never gives you a reaction. It's not artificial. It's not intoxicating. It is from your nerves, it's bubbling out. So this is the center which is very important in us because most of us have a problem with this center. And here we have uh, a capacity by this center that we enjoy our generosity. Now all matter, whatever it is, we are materialistic, materialistic is a good idea to be materialistic. But the matter is, the aesthetics of matters are that you can give it to others suggesting you are loving it. I think that's the only thing a matter can do. And in a very special way you can express that love. For example, somebody likes a particular thing, you go all the way to get it and give that small thing, very small thing to the person and the joy, not out of the money that you have spent, but the feelings you have expressed of knowing what that person would love. And this kind of a depth develops within you such lovable, beautiful society you enter into. And you don't need anything because everybody is looking after your needs. Now I have told them I love flowers because I don't take anything else. So you must see whenever I come, my house is so filled with flowers. 
that my husband was saying, let us go live in the garden and let the flowers be here. So, you see, the joy of giving comes from this center. And whatever you eat, whatever you have to eat, whatever is good for you, you eat. You don't have to bother as to what to eat, what not to eat. You just eat whatever is good for you, benevolent for you. You become so wise and also you please others. You don't displease others by saying, this is bad food, I want that. I want goes away. What do you want? So the, like you could say a candle, which is not enlightened, is waiting to be enlightened, is asking for the light. I want light. But once it is enlightened, it gives light to others, automatically, supposed to be. In the same way, you also start giving your light, your love, your joy to others, automatically. I don't have to tell you, nobody has to go through any Ten Commandments anymore, those days are gone. Now automatically you become like that, very beautiful people, very affectionate and glorious, I should say. If you see the glow on the face of Sahaja Yogis, the face itself is radiant. Many people drop out their ten years to twenty years in their age and they are so enthusiastic, never get tired. Especially in England, I have seen, or also in the West, I would say everywhere. People get very easily tired. On the television also you will find people will come and sit down. <sighs> Young people, they'll talk, ten times they'll say, why are we so tired? Because we think too much. All energy is wasted in thinking, so no energy left to enjoy anything whatsoever. For example, you have to have people for dinner. Then you think what to bring, how to make it formal, what to do, this thing, that thing, so agitated and so nervous about the whole thing. When the guests come in, they feel like running away. Because so much of tension of thinking, 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 planning, 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 planning. Ultimately, the whole joy has disappeared. So, the second center which is there, it does a very miraculous thing, is to provide the grey cells in our brain when we are using it for thinking. And also it looks after your liver, your pancreas, your spleen, your kidneys and lower part of your abdomen. Instead of doing that, poor thing is busy only sending grey cells to your brain because of thinking, 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 thinking like mad. So you develop all other diseases, liver trouble, which is very common, then you develop diabetes very common. Yesterday at least there were ten people who said, we have diabetes. Now diabetes you do not develop by taking too much sugar, take it from me. In India, if you go to a village, you will see that he takes sugar in such a manner that in the cup the spoon must stand at right angle, otherwise he won't take. And he never gets diabetes. The reason he is he doesn't think of tomorrow, he just works hard, eats his food and sleeps off nicely. He doesn't take sleeping pills either. So this diabetes comes by overthinking and can be easily cured if you can take to Sahaja Yoga, which I'll tell you how we stop our thinking at this, I've already told you at this point. Then the third disease which is even more dangerous than this 
is the disease which we call as blood cancer. Blood cancer is caused only to people who think too much. It can even be to the children if the mother is very meticulous, particular about her carpets out, her house, everything, you know, and even a rat doesn't enter that house. But she's very careful that all her things are properly done, her sink doesn't have even so much of little bit of a spot left in it. And all the time thinking, planning, thinking, planning. This affects the child and a child also can get blood cancer. Blood cancer you get it because your spleen is a speedometer, it's the one which gives you the rhythm of life, rhythm of life. Now when we are hectic people all the time under shock, <clears throat> then this goes out of order. For example, in the morning we get up, see the newspaper, and what you find? These Iranians have killed someone, such a shock. Then an accident. Then, I mean, newspaper will never give good news, will they? Will they give news how many people got realization or something is working out all right? No, something horrible that should shock your head, shock your limbic area, otherwise you'll not take it seriously. So, once you read that, you don't know your system is a very delicate system, it gets a shock. And then you get into your car without taking your breakfast or maybe in your hand is the breakfast because you are late. On the way there's a jam, you're shouting, screaming. Somehow or other you reach the office and there's the boss barking. This is how we live, under complete tension. We are supposed to be free people. In the night if you sing loudly, the neighbor will come and put you to the police station. I mean, you can't do anything. There's no freedom. You have to be bound by the watch. This is the time exact you have to reach there. So all these things, pressures and all these things work on us and we become hectic. And for emergency, this spleen is the one which releases red blood corpuscles, RBCs. But if you are all the time like this hectic, that poor spleen becomes mad. It doesn't know what to do. It starts producing more cells, more cells, and then it thinks it's a mad person I'm fixed with because I don't know when to act, when not to act. So the vulnerability is there and suddenly with some other shock he might get blood cancer and the doctors will certify you are going to die after one month, finished. Prepare for your burial. And the whole house is crying. But we have cured, I mean Sahaja Yoga has cured blood cancer of many people just by this Kundalini awakening. Because as soon as the Kundalini is awakened, too much movement this side and that side, this all the time going on in the center, this is the left and the right side of the sympathetic. So just the Kundalini passes through, strings through and brings it back and nourishes it. The problem is over. And though they were certified to be dead, after even four years they are all right, working all right. The certificate is cancelled. Even vulnerability to cancer or to all incurable diseases are because of the, the centers going out of place. Now we have the center which we call here as the heart center. It controls the left and right both, so we have a left and right heart in Sahaja Yoga. As you know that 
in childhood till the twelve years of age, the thymus. This sternum bone creates the antibodies for you. And these antibodies fight your diseases. So when this center goes out, this is the center which sends, sends all the messages to these antibodies. Now this is the center of a mother. When your motherhood is challenged, you develop breast cancer. Supposing a man is a flirt and his wife is worried, she might get a breast cancer because her motherhood is challenged. And her sense of security is very disturbed. As a result of that, she gets this problem. Also, if you are too much of a thinker and you think too much and you are very what we call the right-sided, the futuristic plans. I mean, people plan it for ten years. They plan even their deaths, what dress they are going to wear and where they are going to be buried, up to that point. All this futuristic planning creates such tremendous heat in the body because the liver, which is supposed to absorb all the heat, is neglected by this center. As a result, that heat travels up and you develop asthma. Now we have, yesterday, at least five, six people who came with asthma. Asthma is absolutely curable. But do you know, this is the center of a husband or of the father. Now if I am telling you, you should not be shocked because later on you will find it. Now, if you are a bad husband, you can get asthma or if your wife is a shrew, you might get an asthma or if you are a very bad father, you might get an asthma or if your father is not kind to you, you might get an asthma. If you have not forgiven your father, you might get asthma. Now, can you believe it? Just forgiving your father, you can get out of your asthma permanently. We, Sahaja Yoga has cured asthma of so many people. Believe it or not, it works. It looks so funny, but our relationships, our parents, we have chosen when and we came on this earth. I know they are wrong, they are obstinate, they are headstrongs, they may be drunkards, whatever they are. But even if you leave them, because so many people leave the parents, still forgive them and forget, otherwise you carry the problems with you. The left heart is the place of the mother. Now if your mother has been hard with you, if you have had very bad experiences, you will have problems of the left heart. Center heart is very important where your sense of security should be established. You will be surprised in the disease called AIDS, is the center heart which is out. We have tried to cure, and we cured also three, four people from AIDS, but they have no willpower to continue with Sahaja Yoga, they want to die. And they have made a big martyrdom out of it. You see, they are martyrs, great martyrs of a great principle they have established. It's impossible to convince to them that this is unnatural that you are doing and that you should give it up and you should live. Why should you die? No, we are martyrs for such a big principle we have established. To do something out of the way and new is the modern fashion. Anything. They'll do something with the hair, with the nose, with the eyes, with the ears, with the clothes. That's all you can do. to such an extent that they do not realize that whatever is new may not be good for you. For example, every day we eat our dinner. Supposing we want to eat the table because it's a new, is it a sensible thing? 
Anything that is new is not good, but anything that is old may not be good also. So you have to have that wisdom which comes to you through Sahaja Yoga. There's no other way out. You have to become the Spirit and you have to see in the light of the Spirit what is right and what is wrong. So then we come to this center which is we call as the Vishuddhi. This is sixteen petals, looks after the cervical plexus. Now this is a very, very important center and this is the center is for communication. For example, when you talk, you communicate through your hands, you shake hands, you touch somebody and you can communicate. Even if you cannot talk, with your hands you can communicate. Also when we think we are very responsible, the center goes out. Like some people were travelling by plane, they were from villages, they did not know what was a plane. They were told to take less luggage because it should not be a weight for the plane. So they got into the plane and put all the luggage on their heads and they said that we are trying to reduce the weight of the plane. In the same way we are also doing. Actually the one which is all-pervading power, which has created us, created this universe and has brought us to this level of human beings, is doing everything but we think we are responsible, we have to do it. But once you become a Sahaja Yogi, you just do it, no doubt, but you don't think that you are doing it, you just say it's happening. And what a beautiful feeling it is. Then you don't have blood pressures, you don't have headaches, uh, you don't have uh, tensions, no, because we are not doing it, it's just done. And you find it's all done. Now on this center when we come, as I told you, your thinking is controlled by you. You can control. If you want, you can think or you don't think. But in that silence you feel your peace. If there's too much of crowds, too much of problems, suddenly you become the witness. You start seeing everything, seeing the problem, what it is. Unless and until you can see the problem, you cannot solve it. Because you are in the problem, you just get upset. But if you are out of the problem, you can see it. And that's what happens to you when you become thoughtlessly aware when this center opens out. Last but not the least is the center of limbic area, which is very important. Now, I do not know it has been discovered or not, but will be very soon discovered that very strong uh, things like cracks and all that have got sulfuric acid in it. And that doesn't go anywhere in the body, just rushes into the limbic area. Now this limbic area is a hollow place which has got all cells here very sensitive to joy, happiness, but they become numb, so numb that ordinary music you cannot hear. Somebody has to scream at you, has to shout at you, he has to jump on you, otherwise you cannot enjoy. Then it has to be worse and worse and worse and worse. I don't know, now with cracks, later on they might develop something even more poisonous because it has to excite this limbic area which is such an important thing. But as soon as the Kundalini enters into that area, limbic area, she soothes, she soothes it and it opens, opens like a lotus, thousand petal lotus. It opens and then the Kundalini emerges out of your fontanelle bone area and gets connected to the all-pervading power. Then you start feeling the cool breeze in your hand. You can feel it all over. Some people in the beginning who felt cool breeze would not believe it, so they closed doors, everything and sat down to see. Still they were feeling it. But it works works in the sense 
that you get empowered, you become peaceful, you become the witness, you become the wise and you become empowered that you can give realizations to others like this, that you can raise their Kundalini like this and you can establish that connection, you can do it. And this is what is your right to have it. This is what will give you meaning. Otherwise, so far, whatever we have doing, we have been doing is very frustrating. Now, yesterday I said some questions can be asked, but I haven't seen any questions whatsoever. That means you had no questions. Or oh, there are some questions, we could deal with it for about five minutes. And then we'll have this. Can you hear? Did he come yesterday? What did you say? Ask questions which will help, because I am not a politician and I am not asking for your votes. I am here to give you what you have, your own. So if you have to ask questions, ask questions that are relevant and that will help. This one there. Please. What is the process by which one stops thinking? Oh, just <laughs> this. <laughs> it's very simple when the Kundalini settles down there. What happens, as I told you, there is Christ. Christ is awakened and He sucks in these two institutions which you see there, the yellow and the blue. These are, one is the blue one is our conditioning and the yellow one is our ego. So both these are sucked in like that. These are sucked in because it is said that He died for our sins, didn't He? He suffered for us. Now so that's why study said, are we going to suffer more than Him? We don't have to suffer, only awaken Him at Agya and you are all right. This is the process, it opens up, all right? That's why I said, you must forgive. That's He said, you have to forgive and when you forgive, you can ask for forgiveness. That's why we do both the things, one in front, one in the back. Please get up, man. Automatically. I'll tell you how, please. You see, like if you have to sprout a seed, you have to just put it in the Mother Earth. How do you do it? The Mother Earth has got the capacity and the seed is built in with it. Now it's all built in within you, all right? And just you are here, I can raise it, anybody can raise it those who have got the capacity. Sahaja yogis can raise your Kundalini also. Wait, you, you talked about always thinking. You talked about, like, if you think too much, you can actually create illness and problems in your life. How do you organize your time and your work and everything if you don't think about it? Oh, because the Divine Power does for me. Everything is done by Divine Power. Why should I think, let it think for me? <laughs> you see, I travel every day, uh, sleep at two o'clock in the night, get up about five o'clock in the morning and I travel everywhere and I'm now sixty-seven years of age. All right, so what? Divine Power is looking after me, is working out everything, I'm just moving about nicely, enjoying everything. <laughs> but you have to believe 
that you can get Realization. You need not believe in the Divine Power, but you just first believe that you can get Realization and you get it and get in, con in connection with it. It just works. Is the subtlest of subtle? You see, first of all, you have to give to others. Unless and until you open one door, all right, there's divine power there. But unless and until you open the other door, it won't come in your life. So you have to open the other door also. There where we fail. We want to use Sahaja Yoga for our own purpose, for our own my brother, my sister, my son, all sorts of my, my, my then there's problem, but open it out, everything works out. You must learn to give. This is free. It is situated on top of the brain, where it is above the brain and it's covered with the doctors say that it is 980, 988 nerves, because I don't want to quarrel with them. But <laughs> there are 1,000 nerves which cover it. And when it is enlightened, you'll be surprised. You see a beautiful lotus opening in all colors with very, very silent flames. and. They are so peace-giving, look so beautiful. Because when any nerve gets enlightened, the light of that flame looks like a petal. It's very beautiful it is. But it has to open out. Just now it is covered by our conditioning and our ego, like we have become like an egg, we can say. That's why in Sanskrit language, a person who has known the Brahma, the all-pervading power, is called as Dvijaha. And a person and a bird is also called as a Dvijaha, means born twice. First as an egg, then it becomes a bird, human being and a realized soul. These are the two stages. Now, you have to stand up, brother. Just one minute, she's silent. Yeah, right. You better stay here. What is it? Um, my question is, I just wonder what your thoughts were about this. She's saying, Sri Mataji, that it's very difficult to feel an inner sense of peace if your social conditions are very bad. And in London there are so many homeless <laughs> and people working under very harsh conditions and she just wonders what you think about that. You see, the thing is that now, there are social conditions which are very bad, people are homeless, they are on the streets. Now, thinking about it, you are not going to help them, are you? No. Which is the best way? Is to empower yourself, all right? Now, see, for example, in the villages of India where I work, people have given up alcohol, they have given up all bad habits, they have become very dynamic, they have become very well off, they are living very well. In London, if you want to work, I'm sure you can get a home, no problem. You see, the Asians who have come here, I am an Asian though I didn't come as an immigrant, they are becoming very rich because they work very hard, very hard. So those who want to, in London, but in India may not be, 
But despite that, after Sahaja Yoga they have improved so, they have become so dynamic, they have become so hopeful of life. But if you just think that life is good for nothing, let us now drink and be merry, then it won't work out. This homeless and all these conditions are all such because it's an artificial condition, you know. Many people have houses but they don't want to give it for people to live. Now if those people get transformation, they won't behave like that. You see, the whole behavior will change when the emancipation of the society comes up. But I have seen in the villages of India, there's a complete transformation. The social conditions are much worse, but Indians are more satisfied people. They are not so much. Here even supposing uh, you offer a house, they will say, no, I don't like this house. You offer a job, they'll say, I don't want this job. All these things are there also, too much of choices. But if you decide, London is not a difficult place, I tell you, to work hard and get a house, no difficult. They can do it, but people don't work here, don't work. There are so many old people who haven't got anybody to help them. But these people will never go and help them. They can earn. This is a place where anybody can earn, I think, because I know people, Asians who have come here without any money are very rich today. All of us have got big, big cars, nice houses, this, that. You can see that, they're very hard work. And then divorces. Every third day if you divorce someone, what will happen to you? You'll end up without a home. No respect for the wife, the wife has no respect for the house. All upside down society. There's a big quarrel going on between husband and wife. How can you have a home with this husband and wife fighting? Even TV if you open, nothing but fighting, you just don't want to hear anymore. See, we have to decide on certain things that if you have to make a home, then we have to understand our role in life. For a woman and a man, I agree, they are equal, no doubt, but they are like two wheels of a chariot, which has some distance, but they are not similar. And no use fighting with each other, when you can't live without each other, why should you fight? And that the children are on the streets, every child I find, eighteen years of age is out of the house, I mean here the little children are killed, why? In India I cannot think of such a thing. The reason, though they are very poor, the reason is they know what is love. And that is what I feel that the society has to little bit take to Sahaja Yoga. Now we have so many marriages in Sahaja Yoga. They, I mean one percent marriages fail, one person. They have beautiful children, they are living very well, they have good houses. Those who were really hippies, had nothing, are having nice houses and everything they have. Also, so, some of them were, oh, so I am now, fortunately, I am without job. I said, what? You are very fortunate, yes, now I am without job. Very happy about it. So I told the gentleman that if you are not going to stick to one job, you are not going to come to Sahaja Yoga. And that fellow today has a big car, a nice wife and children and a house. So all these ideas of stupid freedom must be given up. One has to come to a balance and value your life, you must value it. Human life is very valuable. With what great difficulty God has created you and what are we doing with it? The whole society has to take a turn and think of living happily. If the husband and wife, I mean such a relationship, husband and wife cannot live together, then how do we expect this world to have united nations? Cannot. 
is falsehood. In Sahaja Yoga we don't have divorces, we have sometimes, sometimes we have, is allowed. But that is mostly when they are married beforehand, fallen in love, now they are rising in love, falling in love again, again fall, rising. How many times they fall in love, God alone knows. So funny stuff going on. We have to face the reality. So just worrying about these things, what we should do is to first of all become wise and understand the problems. We can all solve it. It's very simple. It's very simple to solve the problems. First of all, we have to enter into the kingdom of God. And secondly, that it solves your problems. Just worrying about poor people, it's also a kind of a fashion these days. Because when I went to Switzerland, I met a lady. She said, I am very guilty. I said, why? Because of Afghanistan. I said, are you Afghani? No, but I am guilty about Afghanistan. Well, what have you got to do with Afghanistan? Nothing. So it's kind of an idea. What are we doing about it? What a Sahaja Yogi does? Sahaja Yogi finds out ways and methods of creating uh, a convenient life, a life where you can earn, we can live. We do it. They have, I've done, I have so many examples I have. Because it's a collective life also you help each other. We didn't have rich people in Sahaja Yoga, many because they seldom come to Sajo. They go to false gurus because they can purchase the guru, they can't purchase Me. So mostly the rich never come here. Bureaucrats also don't come, politicians don't come. So those people who come to Me are the people who can easily solve the problem because they are so collective, they can solve the problem. You will be surprised, I went to Turkey. My husband was not so for it. Everybody said, that's a Muslim country, this, that. I went to a Muslim country, that was Turkey, and a woman. I just said, I must go. But I was surprised, they worshipped mother, they worshipped their mothers. And they were so beautiful, so many. In one shot we got seventy people, serious surgeries. But do you know, when I reached there, people from America, from Australia, from all over the world arrived there in Turkey to help me. I mean, I was so enamored to see my children coming, arriving there, on their own, those who could afford. And the Turkish people, it was so beautiful, I tell you. I found they are the same everywhere. There's only a skin deep difference, I tell you. Otherwise, we are just the same. So, all these problems can be easily solved. There's nothing so serious about it. What? He's asking Sri Mataji, what place does prayer have in conjunction with meditation? Prayer house, I don't know which one is. No, prayer, just praying. Prayer? Praying, prayer. Prayer house. No, what, what place does it have in Sahaja Yoga? I mean the prayer itself, mm. it's mm. part of the place is there. Mm. Prayer is a very great thing, no doubt, but unless and until you are connected, it's like telephoning without connection. There are people in India who will go on saying, Rama, 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 like that. And the 
chakra of Rama itself will be caught. They'll be saying Shiva, 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 and the heart chakra where Shiva resides, it will be caught. The reason is, supposing you want to meet the Queen, now if you go to Buckingham Palace and go on saying, Elizabeth, 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 <laughs> then you'll be arrested. And you'll end up in a jail. So you must have some connection, there should be some protocol. Now, if it is for kings and prime ministers, what about God? He's not in your pocket. But once you are realized, even once you take the name is sufficient, what is there? He's at your disposal all the time there but you have to have connection. Now you are the citizen, say, of England or some place, all right, so your government is looking after you. Whether you are satisfied or not is not the point, but they are looking after you. But if you enter into the kingdom of God, then see the efficiency of this kingdom. You'll be amazed if I tell you how things work out. So amazing it is, so amazing. All right. Yes. What she say? What she asks is, is the balance of the energy centers instant or is it ongoing? Oh, you see, first of all, they say Kundalini has to rise. Then it sometimes comes back to the centers which are needing more help. So it is like a rope, you can say, which has many strings in it, and the very thin ones, just like a hair. And one by one they open out. So first, very few of them pierce through, open out the sastrara, by which you relax and the chakras open out more. It goes on like that. But once you are connected properly, then there's no problem. But it is instantaneous, no doubt about it. But for that you have to come to our centers, don't have to pay anything, just spend some time and you have to master it, that's all. There's a question, what purpose do we have on this planet? The purpose of our existence is to prove that God's creation is the most successful thing. That's the purpose. Yeah. What did he ask? I'm sorry, Shabbat. He's asking, What is God to you? Huh? What is God? Mm. About me, I will not talk, I'm sorry. You better get your realization and try to find out about me. Because those who have talked, see, human beings are mad people, you don't know. Christ said, I am the Son of God, which He was, no doubt, and He said that I am the door, which He was, no doubt, but they crucified Him. They gave poison to Muhammad Sahib, they killed so many saints, I know human beings very well, so please, I am not going to talk to you about myself at all. You better get your Self-realization, try to know Me, because I have to do some jobs, all right? And for that I want to live. 
people are really sometimes so funny, even otherwise they behave in such a funny manner that I can't understand, as if I'm going to take away their property or something, I'm here to give you something that is very important. Sort of you can say, I'm here to complete the work of Christ, Muhammad and all of them. Yes, please. Asking Sri Mataji, uh, when Christ said, "As you give, so you shall receive," what relationship does that have to the Kundalini? Of course, when you will give to others, you will receive the blessings. That's what it is. Absolutely, hundred percent. He said so many things. I mean, just explaining Sahaja Yoga throughout. I think. Yeah. He was a sick man. I think, I, I think he's asking, uh, <coughs> will Christ return or the, is he going to work through human beings? That should not be the question just now, all right? Because to say anything about it, you know how, what happens with people. So this can be discussed later on, when we get our self realization certain things at a level can be discussed. And this is what happened with all of them because they had very little time to talk to you. And that's why everything has been misinterpreted, misused. Because to understand the truth, to bear it also, one has to have Self-realization. This is, I have found out. If you are not a Self-realized person, you can't bear the Truth, you cannot. It's too much for human mind to grasp and to allow it to be a part and parcel of their understanding. This truth is too much for them. So the first thing should be that we get our Self-realization. Yes, my child? Yes. Can you get a please? Thank you. Yeah. He's asking Shri do do the colors of the chakras change according to the mood and according to the personality? No. No, no. But the auras you see sometimes are these colors only, but sometimes you are more strong with one center, so that color shows. They do not change, they are just the same. All right, I think now it's ten o'clock, so we'll take about ten minutes more and let us finish with our Self-realization, which is going to take only ten minutes. Those who do not want to have should please leave. They should not sit here and just watch other people. That's the only uh, kindness I request of them, that if you do not want to have Self-realization, it's better that you should leave. Those people who are standing could not get place can come here or you can also give them places if you want to give some places. No, not for Sahaja Yogis, I said for others. For others, for outsiders, so yogis can stand up.
at the very outset. We have to now understand that we are going to enter into the kingdom of God. And hence we have to little bit unload ourselves. One of the conditions is that we should not feel guilty. One should not feel guilty at all. Yesterday, same problem I said, but you were still feeling guilty. Also it's a fashion. Also I think the language is such, all the time, sorry, sorry, sorry. When we used to receive telephones, we used to say, I beg your pardon. But now it is sorry, 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 ten times sorry. What is there to be so sorry? So we have to be pleasantly placed towards ourselves. We have to respect ourselves. We have to be happy about ourselves. This is first thing, is not to feel guilty about anything. Just believe that you have done nothing wrong which cannot be dissolved by this great power of forgiveness. Please believe me. But if you want to stick on to a feeling like that, no, no, I'm guilty, it's only mental. Animals don't feel guilty about anything. A dog will bark, tiger will eat anything that it wants to, it never feels guilty, it's only human beings feel that way, that I've done this wrong, I've done that wrong. All right. So not to feel guilty, that's one point. And the second one is to forgive everyone, which is very difficult for many people. I don't know how <laughs> many months of unhappiness is in the head because we cannot forgive. Months, it's not kilos and kilos. Yesterday I found most of them had not forgiven and I had to go on putting balm on their heads to take out. So you must cooperate, just forgive, just forgive everyone. First of all forgive yourself and forgive everyone and be pleasantly placed towards yourself. There's no Greek tragedy going on here. No tragedy. We are in a very beautiful atmosphere and we are going to go into the most beautiful area within ourselves, that is our spirit. So we have to be very light about it. All right. With all this understanding, I have to request you that we have to take out your shoes because this Mother Earth also helps us a lot. And not to be serious, not to be serious about it. It's not frivolous. It's fun. So, you have to put your left hand towards me, which? Represents your desire to get Realization. If all the Sahaja Yogis could also sit down, it would be very nice. Please be seated and don't move about. Left hand towards me like that, be comfortable. If you want, you can put it on your lap or you can put it up if you want to. Then the right hand is to be used for nourishing your centers on the left hand side. Now I'll show you how we'll be nourishing. Before that, please remember that put your both the feet apart from each other, not too much but slightly. 
نعم left hand towards me i'll show you before and then we can close our eyes and work it out put your right hand on your heart in the heart resides the spirit and kundalini is the reflection of the holy ghost of the adi shakti within us why the spirit is the reflection of god almighty so we put our attention to our heart first then we take our right hand in the upper portion of our of our abdomen on the left hand side a pressed heart this is the center of our mastery we take down our right hand on the low portion of our abdomen a pressed heart This is the center of pure knowledge that manifests on our central nervous system. We take back our hand in the upper portion of our abdomen. And again we take it in the heart in the upper portion of our heart. then we take it in the corner of our neck and our shoulder and put your head to your right this is the center we catch when we feel guilty then we take our hand on our forehead and slowly bring down our head on it to rest here we press it on both the sides and this is the center to forgive we take back our hand on the back side of our head and put our head resting on it This is the center for asking forgiveness without feeling guilty. We stretch our hand at the center of our palm. We put it on our head in the soft bone area of our childhood called as fontanel bone area and slowly we put down our head. Here we stretch our fingers and move our skull carefully with pressure slowly clockwise seven times that's all we have to do now please close your eyes and don't open them till i ask you to open because attention has to go inside put your left hand towards me now first you will fee- feel thoughtless so don't fight with your thoughts automatically everything will work out don't fight with your thoughts just keep watching and ultimately you will feel cool breeze coming out of your fontanel bone area and you will also start feeling cool breeze all around you which is the cool breeze of the holy ghost the cool breeze of the all pervading power as described by adi shankar acharya salilam salilam is cool and cool so now we put our left hand this way towards me and the right hand on the heart here you have to ask me a very fundamental question three times mother am i the spirit 
in your heart, ask the question, Mother, am I the Spirit? If you are the Spirit, <coughs> you are your Master, because in the light of your Spirit, you know what is right and what is wrong, you can guide yourself. So put your right hand in the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side, and here, please ask me a question again, three times. Mother, am I my own master? Mother, am I my own master? As I have told you that I will not cross your freedom, I respect your freedom and only if you want, I can bestow this pure knowledge upon yourself, otherwise I cannot. So please put your right hand in the low portion of your abdomen and ask a question. Mother, or you can request, Mother, please give me pure knowledge. Say this six times because this center has got six petals. Mother, please give me pure knowledge. Now, all the prophets of the past and the saints and seers have built up for us a center of mastery. But to open the center, we have to have all the confidence. So please raise your hand and put it in the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side and say here with full confidence to nourish this center ten times, Mother, I am my own master. Please say this ten times. Now we have to know that we are not this body, we are not this mind, we are not these emotions, we are not this intellect, we are not our conditionings or we are our ego, we are pure spirit. So now raise your hand to your heart and with full confidence say twelve times, Mother, I am the Spirit. Please say it twelve times. Mother, I am the Spirit. You have to know that this divine power is the ocean of love and compassion. It is the ocean of joy and bliss. But above all, it is the ocean of forgiveness. So there is no mistake that you have committed which cannot be dissolved by this ocean. So please forgive yourself and put your right hand in the corner of your neck and your shoulder and turn your head to your right. Here you have to say, with complete confidence again, Sri Mataji, I am not guilty at all. Or you can call me Mother, Mother, I am not guilty at all.
16 times. Please say this 16 times. Now, one has to know whether you forgive someone or don't forgive. You don't do anything, it's a myth. <coughs> but if you don't forgive, then you play into wrong hands. So put your right hand on your forehead and please bend your head, resting on the hand as much as you can. And now press it on both the sides. And here, please, please say it from your heart, Mother, I forgive everyone. Please say it from your heart. Please say it, otherwise again I'll have to work very hard on you. So please say it from your heart. Mother, I forgive everyone. You are not going to miss your Self-realization for not forgiving. Please. How many lives you have been seeking the Truth? At this time you are not going to miss it out. Now take back your hand on the back side of your head and push back your head as much as you can, resting on your hand and here for your own satisfaction, without feeling guilty, without counting your mistakes, please say, O Divine, if I have done any mistakes, please forgive me. in a very general manner. Now, stretch your hand. And put the center of your hand on top of the fontanelle bone area which was the soft bone in your child. Press back your fingers, push them out, very important. And now I have to tell you that I cannot again cross over your freedom. So you have to ask for Self-realization, it cannot be forced on you. So please move your scalp slowly, clockwise, seven times, while doing that, ask, Mother, please give me my Self-realization seven times. Please say it seven times. Push back your fingers, push back, otherwise you won't pressurize it. Now take down your hands, please, both the hands. Now push the right, left hand towards Me and bend your head and see for yourself if there's a cool breeze coming out of your head. It may be a little 
away from the head or could be close to it, but it is above the head. Now, put your right hand towards me, bend your head and see for yourself. If there's a cool breeze coming out of your head. Once again, put your left hand towards me and with the right hand, please see if there's a cool breeze coming out of your head. Now please open your eyes. Put both the hands up like this and watch me without thinking. Now put both the hands up in the sky and look upward and ask a question, <coughs> any one of these questions three times. Mother, is this the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost? Mother, is this the all-pervading power of God's love? Mother, is this the Paramachaitanya? Ask any one of these questions three times. Put down your hands, please. You have become thoughtless, without thoughts. Those who have felt cool breeze in their hands or from their head, Please raise both your hands, please. So many. May God bless. Some have not felt, doesn't matter. Who are sitting down here, please look after them. They have not felt it. All right? No? If some people want to meet me, please come and see. But those who have seen me yesterday should not repeat would be better, but some of them whom I have told that I will see you tomorrow can come. These people have not felt, three, four people. Please sit down, please be seated. Four, stay, four people. We, they will just work it out. Those who have not